Hi everyone, I'm Richard and this is the MSI Gaming Z version of the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080. Now, I wanted to look at this one for a number of reasons, but first and foremost, mostly because I didn't have time to go in depth on 1080 overclocking when I took a look at the Founders Edition here. Well, I'm glad I did because while the reference card isn't really that bad at all, this one is a much more refined package. Okay then, so port selection is the same as the standard card, but pretty much everything else sees substantial upgrades. And that starts with the thermal solution based on MSI's new twin Froza 6 cooler. The new Torx 2 fan technology generates more airflow and higher pressure than its predecessor, meaning that it can run 40% quieter for the same cooling power. Now, compared to the Founders Edition, MSI reckons it's 20 20% cooler and 35% quieter. Right then, but this is the Gaming Z version, an exclusive variant of the more mainstream Gaming X. And the differences are pretty straightforward. The backplate gets an illuminated MSI logo along with RGB lighting controlled by your PC via the MSI Gaming app. And there are also additional tweaks to the factory overclocks you can select. So it's a touch faster than the X, but nothing game changing. But crucially, it's the same chip the same cooling solution, so you should expect fairly similar results once you roll up your sleeves and overclock it beyond the presets. But yeah, let's take a look at those presets that you get here. The silent mode looks to be effectively on par with the Founders Edition running at reference clocks, but the gaming preset looks to add around 7% of performance based on our testing, while the OC setting takes that further, increasing frame rates by 9%. Boost clock in OC mode, which is the default setting, Setting, by the way can hit just under 2 gigahertz which isn't bad at all for performance out of the box but if you're going to invest this much money in a 1080 I reckon it's the manual overclocking that you're going to be interested in. Now the core that is already pushed significantly so I could only add another 80 megahertz to it in order to maintain stability but the G5X memory well I could add plus 440 megahertz there taking us up to 11 gigabits per second. With the manual overclock in place I could hit around 2.1 gigahertz on the core but it throttles down to 2080 megahertz and it tends to settle at about 2050. It seems that there are a ton of checks and balances in the GP104 chip designed to keep it stable. The end result, still pretty compelling though, 14 to 15 percent of additional performance over stock. But there's another option here that could prove rather interesting. Rather than pushing core clocks to their very limits, you could just stick with the factory OC there, but you can retain the manual G5X overclock. And when we compare them, we see something very interesting. We retain 98% of the performance overall, but because the core isn't being touched, we maintain rock solid stability no matter what. And that's a nice option to have available. So. You can look at the numbers, you can look at the benchmarks, but really, from my perspective at least, it's all about the experience. And this is something else I really wanted to follow up on after our GTX 1080 review. You see, I have a rather nice 32-inch 4K monitor, but I never use it for gaming, simply because the compromise on settings is just too much, even with heavyweight hardware like Titan X and R9 Fury X. Well, the GTX 1080, especially with the overclock in place, well, that's the experience it's capable of delivering. Star Wars Battlefront then, 4K resolution, ultra settings. Yeah, frame rates are a little bit unstable, but we almost get to 60 FPS locked. We needed to tweak a few settings down. That's no big deal, really. It still looks amazing. I'm using the Endor speeder bike chase as a bit of a stress test here, as on the console versions, DICE dialed back settings a bit on this level compared to all the others in order to accommodate the richer detail of this environment. And that's pretty much the point I want to make here. Yeah, pretty much any GPU on the market right now can run a game at 4K, and some will get you decent enough frame rates. But when performance drops, the experience feels badly compromised unless you really dial back the settings. And personally, I just don't want to do that. 
Now, not every game can offer a 4K 60 lock, but the GTX 1080 in many cases on demanding games gets pretty damn close. Now, elsewhere on the channel, you'll find a more in-depth hands-on with the GTX 1080, the MSI model here, where I run more games at 4K, including GTA 5, Metal Gear Solid 5, Overwatch, Crisis 3, Doom on Vulcan. Now, that is a 4K video native, so do check that out. But returning to the MSI Gaming Z here, the question is, what does it offer over the standard Founders Edition? And that's simple, better stability when overclocking and a boost to those all important lowest recorded frame rates. And yeah, a more refined, discreet experience, lower temperatures, and a much more discreet audio profile. Okay, so I'll leave it right there for now, but do check out that 4K60 vid. In the meantime, like and subscribe for more Digital Foundry, and I'll see you soon.